All right, so this uh, section is all about implicit differentiation. So this word implicit you may have not seen before. All right, um, you've actually done explicit a lot. Most of the equations you've done in math have been explicit. Anytime there was a y equals, that's explicit. Okay, what else do we see sometimes besides y equals? Yeah, f of x equals. That's also explicit. Okay, then we get to this thing right here, and this is not in y equals. Okay, if it's not in y equals, we call that implicit. Okay, so far we have been doing explicit differentiation. Today we're going to start with implicit differentiation. It's not a completely different thing, um, but there are some new aspects to it. Okay, now if I told you to get y by itself right here, what would you do besides maybe cry? What would you try? Maybe factoring, multiplying, subtracting. I mean, I will tell you, for this particular equation, you cannot get y by itself. Sometimes you're going to see these problems, and it's just going to be really difficult to get y by itself. And on most of them, it's going to be flat out impossible. But we can still take the derivative. Okay, when have you done x or implicit? Like, when have you seen equations that were not y equals? You've actually done it many times. Remember when you had like 2x, sorry, plus 3y equals 6? Yeah, you had to get, you probably immediately got y by itself, but this right here is implicit right now. Okay, we get y equals. It turns into explicit, and it can be done both ways. What about a little section called conics? Do you remember those? Don't You don't need to worry. We're not doing conic sections, okay? But um, you had circles and ellipses and parabolas that were x equals instead of y equals, and, and you had hyperbolas, depending on how, you know, you probably didn't do a lot with hyperbolas, maybe just a little bit. Those were all implicit equations, okay? And they were not functions. Look at number one. Is this a function? No, it fails the vertical line test. Okay, so they kind of go hand in hand. They could be functions, but they're typically not. All right, and the graph is there not because I expect you to know how to graph it. Quite the opposite. I know that you don't know how to graph this. And you know what? Neither do I. This is not something we graph by hand. Okay, you graph with um, a calculator or a computer program that graphs things this way. Okay, and you don't, in your calculator, all you know how to do is y equals even. You don't even know how to do this in your calculator. So that's why the graph is given to you, so you can kind of have an idea of what it looks like. Now, the only thing that really makes this different is we're going to use this dy over dx notation a lot more instead of y prime. I'll explain why when we do our example. Um, you're always taking the derivative with respect to x. Okay, we've been doing that. Every time we've taken the derivative so far, it has always been with respect to x. Okay? Um, when we get to a term that involves only x, everything's per usual. Okay? But when we get to a term that has a y value, we're going to have to apply the chain rule. So I'm done talking about it. Let's actually do this problem. So it says find dy over dx by implicit differentiation. Remember, dy over dx is the same as y prime. I'm not going to use that notation here. Again, you're just going to have to wait a couple minutes for me to explain why. But your final answer is going to be dy over dx equals something. Okay, that's what your final answer is going to look like. If we could get y by itself and then derive like how we have been, that would be great. We can't do that here. So these are going to be your steps. Okay, the first thing is we got to actually take the derivative. Okay, the way I show this in these problems is to do d over dx. What this means is that I'm deriving the whole equation, both sides, right and left, with respect to x. This little over dx means with respect to x. Okay, x is our independent variable, y is our dependent. I know you've heard that kind of stuff before. It's the same idea there. Okay, now, what do you think the derivative of y cubed is? 3y squared, and that is 100% right, except 
we have to apply chain rule. So it's that's not wrong. I just need to put something after it. Okay, think of this y cubed like an M&M. &M. Okay, what would the shell be? The cubed. So I derived the cubed. The y is the chocolate. And so now we have to derive the chocolate. And the way we do that is we write dy over dx. That's how we represent the derivative of the inside, dy over dx. What you could write here is y prime. Why do you think I'm choosing this notation instead of y prime? Because there's already a y there. And what might y prime look a lot like? y to the first power. And that is trouble. Okay, so we're going to always use dy over dx here. And that's not even up for debate. That's not a preference thing. That's just what we're all going to do because I've been doing this a while and I know what works and what doesn't. So when you derive a y term, derive it like usual times dy over dx. That's the moral of that story. Okay, what I like to do is kind of scratch that off to show that I took der that derivative. We have a lot of terms here, so it's easy to get um, lost and like forget a term. Okay, when you get to an x term, that's like normal. What's the derivative of plus x cubed? Plus 3x squared. You do not need to write anything after it. Okay, let's say you're like, well, I want to write something after it. Watch what I'm going to do here. Don't write this down because I'm going to erase it. But what I could do here is say, oh, I'm going to use chain rule. I'm going to take derivative of the inside. That would be dx over, it's always over dx. What's dx over dx? 1. So it, you're really just wasting your time there. When you get to an x term, it's just normal. Okay, so what about minus y squared? Minus 2y times dy over dx. What about minus 5y? Minus 5 times dy. So even though there's no longer a y in this, we still write the dy over dx because I took derivative of a y. And minus x squared would just be minus 2x. And nothing after it because that was an x term. Now that was the difficult part, but what we write next is actually where most students make their mistakes. What is the derivative of negative 4? You all know this now, but when you're taking that next quiz or test, a lot of students want to write negative 4 there. They forget to take the derivative of that number. Okay. Sometimes if it was like negative 4x, well then we would write negative 4. All right, so you just, you just got to follow the, all the rules that we've been practicing. Okay, now remember our answer needs to be dy over dx equals. So we need to identify which terms have a dy over dx. So I like to just use the strategy of boxing the terms. Now please notice that I'm boxing everything in front, including the plus or the minus. This is just a strategy that you may or may not need to do. For now, let's all do it, and then later on when you're practicing, you can decide if you need to or not. Okay, now, if I want dy over dx equals, that means I want dy over dx on the left. These other terms that don't have it, I need to kick those over to the right side. Okay, so what I would like to do is to rewrite just the terms I've boxed. And I still have a couple more steps to go, but I need the non dy over dx terms to be on the right side, and I'm going to use adding and subtracting. So since this is a positive 3x squared, I need to subtract it to make a negative 3x squared on the left, or on the right, sorry. What would come next? Plus 2x. Okay, so we're one step closer to getting dy over dx by itself. Okay, what I like to do next is to circle what's in front of dy over dx. Again, this is just a strategy to highlight what we have and what we want. I have one, two, three dy over dx's. I only want a single one. I have, the only way to do this is factoring. You have to factor out a dy over dx. 
And what are you left with? The three things I circled. That's why I did it. It's just a strategy to kind of help organize your information. The right side, nothing's happened to that, so we'll just rewrite it. So again, one step closer to getting dy over dx. I have one more step to go, and this is actually the easiest one. What do you guys think we need to do? Um, divide. So I got to divide by this because there's a multiplication symbol here, and so I can cancel that out. And you can write it in parentheses, although you don't have to. So notice I'm dividing exactly. And so I need to divide over here. So my final answer is going to be dy over dx equals negative 3x squared plus 2x over 3y squared minus 2y minus 5. That's our answer. So remember how all the x's and y's were jumbled up in the beginning? Well, our dy over dx is going to be jumbled up. And it's pretty much almost always going to be a fraction like this. Okay, anybody like really want to simplify this? No, me neither. So we're not going to. In fact, you can't simplify this. Some people are like, well, can't you factor the denominator? Well, even if I could, would anything cancel with something from the top? Probably not. Some of these do simplify slightly. We will worry about that another day. Most of the time though, what I find is students want to like take this two and this two. You can't do that. That's, it's not even a, you don't have to. That's like a bad step. That's not good math. Okay, so I want to show you in the graph what this represents. Okay, this was the graph of what they gave us, okay? If I were to take any point Okay, and I knew the x and the y value. Okay, see how that kind of makes like a tangent line there? If I were to plug in this x, which looks like it's maybe about 1.5 and then maybe, oh, 2.2 or something. If I plugged those numbers into my answer down here, it would give me my slope. And we'll see that here on an example in just a minute. Okay, so let's recap these steps because this is something, especially because this lesson goes over a weekend, you're going to probably want to come back and go, wait, what are the steps again? Okay, so the first step was that we differentiated, and I'm going to abbreviate here, D-I-F-F, with respect to, I'm going to abbreviate here, I'm just going to introduce you to abbreviations. If you're like, I'll forget this, then don't abbreviate, write it out. Do you guys remember what we differentiate with respect to? X. X. Good. And in parentheses, I want you to write dy over dx because you got it every time you take derivative of a y term, you need that dy over dx after it. Okay, our next step was to get all the dy over dx terms on the left. That's what we did when we boxed those terms, just to really highlight which ones stay and which ones go. What did we do after that? We factored. We, dividing is going to be the next step. But we factor out a dy over dx. As you had several. We only want one. So we factored it out, and the last step is to divide. This is not something you're necessarily going to memorize. You know, this is something you're going to know how to do because you've practiced it. I I, this is just not something you can, you may even think this is easy watching me do this now, but if you don't practice it, you're not going to get very good at it. So turn the page and let's look at example two, and that's where we'll just finish two, and then that's where we'll end today. Okay, so remember, and by the way, this is this weird graph over here. Remember, what we do is we take derivative of both sides. Derivative with respect to x. How is this problem different? Ooh, I have a 2x to the 6 times y to the ninth. 
What rule? Product rule. Don't look exci too excited, y'all. It's not that bad, though. Okay, so remember the product rule. And write yourself a little note here if you need to. Because this is where, this is a common mistake here. People just want to go, oh, derivative of this times derivative of that. Okay, so derivative of 2x to the 6th is 12x to the 5th. Then just y to the 9th. And notice I did not write a dy over dx because although this is a y term, I didn't derive it yet. That's the first half of product rule. The second half would be to just write 2x to the 6th. And then what would the derivative of y to the 9th be? 9y to the 8th. And this is where you need your dy over dx because we derived a y term. All right, that's that. Let's cross it off so we know we did it. Derivative of 3x plus 3. Nothing special about that. Derivative of y cubed minus 3y squared times dy over dx equals 8. So 2 cubed is 8, but the derivative of that is 0. Okay, next we need to identify all of the terms that have dy over dx in them. Okay, are y'all okay if I go ahead and multiply this 2 and this 9? I mean, I'm going to. Just making sure everybody knows. That's where I'm getting 18, just 2 times 9. If you didn't want to do that for whatever reason, you it would be okay if you didn't. Remember, keep all the dy over dx terms on the left. So what I've boxed stays on the left. Okay, the other stuff gets kicked over to the other side. So minus 12x to the 5th, y to the 9th, minus 3. What's next? Factor. Factor. So this is where I circled. And again, this is a strategy. If this is not helping you, you don't have to do it. It's not required. I think it makes it a lot easier because then you go, oh, dy over dx. What I circled is what's left inside. So 18x to the 6th, y to the 8th, minus 3y squared. And the right side, still just the same old thing. Don't try to simplify here. Okay. That was the third step. What's the fourth step? Divide. I am okay with you just writing divide by over here just because this is going to be the common last step. And this is where if you can get this far, the dividing is pretty easy. Totally fine for you just to write your answer like that and just show that you divided by crossing that off. So this is the derivative. Okay, so let's, I'm going to show you more what this means in this picture. I'll show you what it means in the picture right here. When it says find the slope, what word is like right next to you, in your brain, whose bunkmate is slope? Derivative, hopefully. And hopefully average rate of change and instantaneous rate of change are right in there as well. So, because they're all related concepts. So that means that I need to use my derivative. And I have an x and a y. Okay, so watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug 0 in. And then I'm going to plug negative 2 in. Don't get freaked out by negative 2 to the ninth. It ends up not mattering. And although we don't need to simplify, I want to on this because it's going to make it like easier to understand what it means on the graph. Okay, see the zero? That totally goes away. 
And what is negative 3 divided by negative 3 times negative 2 squared? What does that simplify to? 1 fourth, positive 1 fourth. Okay, this is what it means. At the point 0, negative 2. See how it kind of looks flat, but it can, you can kind of see it increasing just a little bit. The slope of that line is 1 fourth. That's what the slope of that tangent line is. That's how steep the graph is at 0, negative 2, which is the same thing that it meant before. It's just weirder graphs. Okay, write the equation of the tangent line. Hey, we have our x1, we have our y1, we have our slope. This is the easy part. y minus negative 2 equals slope x minus 0. This is definitely something you should be an expert at by now. It's writing the equation of a line. What do you think we would have to do if they ne didn't give us the negative 2? We would have had to go back up to the beginning, plug 0 in um, for x, and then we'd have to solve for y, which isn't too bad on this problem. Some problems, that gets really nasty. That's why a lot of the time you're given that value on these problems.